Hello and welcome to round seven of the Needful TV. This week, the Needful representative squad was announced and plenty of players vying for selection had cracking games over the weekend. Let's get straight into it. Game one, the Sydney Swans hosted UWS Giants. The Giants entered this match with a severely depleted lineup, but early on, they had the better of the contest. Early goals to James Stewart, Liam Sumner and Thomas Bug had the Giants up and going at ANZ Stadium. Despite five scoring shots to four in the opening term, the Swans trailed by nine points at quarter time. Whatever Swans coach Jared Crouch said at the first break, it sparked his team into action. The Swans piling on four goals early in the second term. After three goals in the opening term, the Giants kicked just one behind in the second quarter and the Swans turned that nine point quarter time deficit into a 17 point halftime lead. Desperately needing early goals to get back into the contest, the Giants surged forward but were inaccurate in front of the big sticks. Led by midfielders Matthew Dick, Dan Robertson and veteran Ryan O'Keefe, who all had more than 30 possessions through the midfield, the Swans took charge. Sydney's leading goal kicker for the year, Tim Membry, kicked a goal along with Dean Towers and the Swans skipped away. Colt hero Lewis Roberts Thompson also hit the scoreboard late on along with Membry again who finished with four goals and the Swans finished with a 75 point victory. Next up, we travel to Broadbeach's H&A Oval, where the Southport Sharks took on the Brisbane Lions. In good conditions at H&A Oval, this game started with a flurry of behinds from either side, before Southport's Eddie Mallon stopped the rot. James Polkinghorn got a quick reply for the Lions, before late goals from Luke Shreve and Fraser Pope saw Southport take the lead at quarter time. The first half of the second quarter was a genuine scrap with six behinds kicked. Finally, at the 22 minute mark, Southport's Nick Burden kicked the first six pointer of the term. While the Sharks closed out the first term with two late goals, it was the Lions who finished the second quarter the better, with goals to Polkinghorne and Crisp getting them right back in the contest at half time. Polkinghorn, who's been very good all year and is pushing for a senior recall, got the Lions' first goal of the third quarter and his side trailed by just one point. But just as Brisbane looked set to mount a comeback and take the lead, Luke Shreve steadied his side. But another Lions senior regular, Rowan Buick, got his first major of the game late in the third term and Brisbane trailed by just one point at three quarter time. Buick kicked another goal to begin the fourth term, but it was sandwiched between two Southport majors. Led by Mark Collison and Stephen Thyme through the middle of the ground, the Sharks began to look like the better side, and when Eddie Mallon kicked his second goal at the 16 minute mark, they led by 20 points. With only a handful of minutes remaining, former Broadbeach big man Mitch Brewer stepped up and kicked a goal, and Southport had the game sealed, eventually running out 12-11-83 to 7-8-50 winners. Now to our location for last week's Needful TV, Star Trek Oval in Canberra, where the East Lake Demons played Sydney Hills Eagles. After a strong win against Belconnen a fortnight ago and a narrow loss to Queensland powerhouses Redland last week, Sydney Hills Eagles look to have turned a corner and they continued their good form early in this game. He stubs, he won't miss that one, you betcha. The Eagles dominated the opening term, leading by 21 points at quarter time, though that margin could have been greater if they'd kicked straight. It's Milani who toes it off the ground and gets his second and he gets the Hills Eagles fourth. After recruiting heavily from the Northern States over the off-season, Sydney Hills' Queensland recruits finally clicked for the first time this year, led by Adam Eckerman, Josh Milani and Kieran Emery. The trio helped the Eagles to a comfortable 28-point lead at half-time, though the match tightened considerably early in the third term, as Eastlake played their best footy of the game. Kerry, come on! There's another contender for goal of the week, David Cummins. As happened in the opening quarter with the Eagles, the Demons ran rampant in open play but were a little inaccurate in front of goals, eventually kicking three goals four for the third term and getting right back in the contest. Looked, looked terrible off the boot, but I'll tell you what, that has not moved. Leading by 16 points at three-quarter time and with a threat of a comeback imminent, the Eagles needed a steadier and they got it 
through Josh Milani. And uh, yeah, that's a great kick from Josh Milani. Nominated in the Neeful representative squad earlier in the week, Trent Stubbs was immense for the Sydney Hills Eagles and his side eventually ran out winners 87 to 57, their second win of 2014. Hurting from last week's loss to Belconnen, Sydney University was bidding to get its season right back on track, hosting Queenville. These sides clashed back in round two, where the students ran out 72 point winners to open their account for 2014, and like that game, they started this match very strongly. The foot skills, which left a little bit to be desired against Belconnen last week, were very sharp from Daniel Gilmore's men to start this game, and the students led by 35 to 14 at quarter time. But the Tigers lifted after quarter time in Captain Ryan Quaid's milestone 200th game, roaring right back into the contest, led by Robinson, Bryce and Dickinson. It was apparent there was to be no repeat of that round two drubbing and Queen Bien trailed by just 11 points at half time. Suspended last week, returning Sydney University live wire Matt Powies was amongst the goal scorers in the third term, along with Ryan Brabazon and another former AFL star, Nick Winmark. Sydney University kicked three goals in that third quarter, but that was matched by a very willing Queen Mian side, and the margin was just 12 points at the last change. In their first match at Oval No. 1 in 2014, the students were buoyed by a very supportive home crowd, the majority of whom had played in the curtain raiser to this game, an old boys clash. With the crowd well and truly behind them, you got the sense the students were always going to just eke this one out, and that's exactly what happened. Led by representative squad members Derricks, Brabazon and O'Dwyer, Sydney University recorded another win, 14-16-100 to 14-8-92. NT Thunder played outside Darwin for just the second time this year, travelling to Brisbane to take on Aspley. After making the Northern Conference Grand Final last year, Aspley has had a little bit of a slow start to 2014, but they were absolutely on fire to start this game, shell-shocking the undefeated NT Thunder. The Thunder's only other trip to Queensland this year saw them win relatively comfortably against the Gold Coast Suns, but this game was not following that script. The angle's not a bad one and the kick's even better. The Hornets kicked six unanswered goals in the first term to take a whopping 35-point lead into quarter time and they continued to charge after the first break. A handful. Adam Hughes has been a bit quiet in front of goals for the Hornets this year but he came to life early in the second term, kicking the opening two majors of the quarter. One man who hasn't been quiet for the Hornets is Eddie Sansbury and he got amongst the goals in that second term along with Jack Stanley, James Nellis and Ryan Matthews. Another goal. A major to Matthews was the Hornets 12th for the first half and NT Thunder went into the main break without a goal to their name. Granted, the Thunder were missing a couple of players, including former AFL star Nathan Gierka, but they should have been making a better fist of this game. Clinton French, James Nellis and Eddie Sansbury again stretched the Hornets' lead to almost 100 points at the six-minute mark of the third term before Darren Buffewing finally got the visitors' first goal. When Stephen Miles goaled a few minutes later, the Thunder had kicked two of the last three and a comeback might have been in the offing, but Chaney Stiller and James Nellis put pay to that. Looks straight and looks good. Ewing potted his second for the Thunder and Christopher Dunn finally got on the scoreboard himself, but it was much too little, much too late. Reese Toy and Joseph Day compounded the Thunder's pain with late goals and Aspley, they ran out 24-15-159 to 4-10-34 winners. We finished the round with the second match in Canberra, where our Conan Magpies took on the Ainsley Tricolours. After their first win of the season last week, an upset two-point victory over Sydney University, Belconnen were up again to start this game, with goals to Daniel Posh and Dominic Bunyan. But Ainsley, who went into this game as favourites, responded, and when Nicholas Payne kicked a late goal, the Tricolours skipped out to a four-point lead at the first change. 
If Belconnen were the slightly better side in that first term, Ainsley were well and truly the better team in the second quarter as Aaron Vandenberg and Nicholas Payne got amongst the goals. Posh kicked another for Belconnen to close the gap, but star recruit Nick Salter rounded out the first half with a goal for Ainsley and they led by 23 points at half time. Posh kicked his third goal to open the third term and cut the margin back to less than 20, but Ainsley responded very, very strongly. Goals to Alex Birch and Nicholas Payne's third. The closing stages of the third quarter were evenly contested and Jordan Harper kept his side in the game with a late goal, but Sean Ellis, who made the need for representative squad, kicked the last goal of the third term and Ainsley, they led comfortably at three quarter time. In front of their home crowd, Balconnen desperately needed a couple of early goals in the fourth term, but that wasn't the way things panned out, as Alex Birch, Eric Stone and star Aaron Vandenberg put Ainsley well and truly in control. With the result now of formality, Belconnen had one of its best periods of the game late in the fourth term, as Adams and Taylor Gold and Posh, brilliant all day, kicked his fourth. <laughs> But the day was all about Ainsley. Nick Payne kicked his fifth goal and the Tricolours moved to 3-3 three three after a comfortable 30-point victory. Now to Mark and goal of the round and we'll start with Mark first where Queanbeyan's Sam Jensen juggled an important streamer late in the fourth term against Sydney University. This week's best goal comes from Star Trek Oval in Canberra, courtesy of Matt Eastman from the Sydney Hills Eagles. I think it's, uh, is it Eastman out there taking the kick? But whatever the kick, it was a fantastic kick from the boundary line. He's dogged that, it is well in contention. I think it is Eastman, the number 27. That's all we've got time for, for round seven of Needful TV. Don't forget, check the website for the full list of that representative squad. I'm Sam Canavan, see you next time.